All right, well, good late morning all. It's uh, Friday today, and I am headed out for a work commute on the Riker. I've got to go down to the... Got to go down to Micro Center and pick up some SSD drives for a uh, customer that needs to rebuild some workstations with Windows 10 rather quickly. <laughs> uh, they've got an application that uh, is requiring Windows 10. They were not aware of it and they went ahead and started their upgrade process and now uh, the app doesn't work. So to resolve that by upgrading them to Windows 10 on about six machines. A rapid fire here and get it done. So Monday they are not stuck sitting still doing nothing. I am planning on a short vacation first part of next week. I'll be going to Austin, Texas with my son and my middle daughter. go to a uh, little resort uh, hotel on Lake Travis and spend uh, two and a half days there. We're going to rent some wave runners and a uh, ski boat and just goof off for a couple days have some fun. We scheduled this a couple weeks ago and uh, the forecast was all rosy and pretty, uh, but as is typical for my usual Austin vacations, it looks like uh, we're going to have rain. Tuesday at the very least, probably Wednesday as well, so that is not optimal. So we're going to try to get there as early as possible on Monday while the weather is still partly cloudy, uh, and then if Tuesday turns into a, a washout or a rainout, then at least we got some fun in on Monday while we could. I don't know how Tuesday is going to turn, or Wednesday rather, is going to turn out. Um, See how that goes. And then we'll be coming back here Wednesday late afternoon, early evening, and pick up on whatever work tasks have piled up for me in the previous two days. Three days almost. Yeah, my uh, older kids haven't had a vacation in quite a while. Uh, we had planned to do some uh, overseas travel uh, two years ago, but we were expecting our uh, newest member of the family, our toddler, to come along and uh, put the kibosh on all the uh, travel plans for a while. And then this summer we were planning on doing it again, uh, going somewhere, but my wife had to go to uh, Brazil kind of unexpectedly. So changed our travel plans again. So, the older two kids and I will just go do a short vacation, goof off. Uh, we might do another little short outing, uh, not next week, but the following week, uh, which will be the last week of their summer vacation, I think, or the last couple weeks of their vacation. Uh, we'll maybe go up to the Dallas area or San Antonio or something like that. Just find something to do. It's always a little tricky for me to take off for vacation because uh, being self-employed and doing the kind of work that I do, it's all, you know, for the most part, it's reactive. And uh, if I'm not available to take it, then that leaves my customers kind of sitting in a tough spot until uh, I'm able to return from wherever I am. And the service industry being reactive, you know, if you don't take those jobs when they come to you, then the next time the customer might go somewhere else. And that's totally understandable. You know, business is business. they got to keep the wheels turning. So for me to take off, it's uh, tricky. I lose the, uh, the revenue for not doing the jobs. I have the downtime leading up to a vacation event and then you know, recovering after the vacation event and the uh, momentum, you know, getting the momentum rolled up again. It's expensive. Weather's actually kind of nice today. It's humid, but the uh, 
the air temp isn't too bad. It's low 90s right now. The last several days we've been up in the high 90s and really high humidity. It's just been oppressive. When you step outside and it's hard to breathe, the air is so hot and thick. Today's not so bad. Now that doesn't mean I want to get stuck sitting still in the sun, <laughs> but yeah, as long as I'm moving, it's not bad. We thought about taking uh, the Riker and uh, one of my other bikes uh, for this uh, Austin trip, but I don't know that my daughter would be able to uh, tolerate a two and a half hour ride on the back uh, up to Austin. And then with the weather being questionable for our return, uh, she's never really been on a road trip with me for any distance, so I don't know how she would do with that. And with her left leg, uh, she her hips and leg get tired uh, kind of fast, so I'm not sure if that would be a good idea for her or not. We need to do a shorter road trip as a trial first. Let's see how she does with that instead of throwing her in the deep end. I don't know if that's coming through on the camera audio or not, but at idle this thing stutters a bit, and I don't know what that is. It doesn't do it all the time, but every now and then it'll stutter just idling. Uh, it doesn't seem to do that under power. Uh, I don't know if that's a problem or not. It's an anomaly. I did notice the uh, noisy fuel pump issue yesterday after I parked it, uh, after my commute. And again, it's pretty hot. It's near 100 degrees yesterday here. Probably hotter than that if you include the road temp and all that. But uh, the fuel pump has gotten noisy and that's a new sound. It didn't used to do that. I need to drop this off over at uh, Wild West, the dealer, and have them take a look at it for that and other potential warranty items like the rusty front hubs and the other stuff. So I might do that today or tomorrow, time permitting, and uh, just leave it with them because I'll be out of town the first part of next week and I won't need it. So. to raise my windscreen up but for now I'm just hunkering down to stay behind the little bubble <laughs> oh yeah that's a good uh, uh, another little segue here um, I had contacted Madstad engineering right after I purchased the Riker back in January and asked them if they had a fitment or a planned fitment for the Riker and uh, they just sent me an email back I think it was the beginning of this week Monday or Tuesday and said uh, they now have a fitment for the Riker and the cool thing is it's, uh, they say it's quick removable. So no tools needed to remove it. Uh, apparently it's got a clip mechanism or something uh, that allows you to click it on and off the bike. And I'm sure that it's uh, typical Madstad uh, quality with uh, the adjustable height and rake setting on it. So I may go ahead and pull the trigger and get one. It's not cheap. I think it's almost 300 bucks, but yeah, whatever. Again, with the amount of miles that I put down, those conveniences and comforts uh, are worth a lot more than the initial cost. Like the cruise control thing here, you know, without that, there's no way I could do four or five hundred mile days on this without it, because you just can't relax your hand and you get that uh, cramp in your hand or you know, sweaty palm, whatever. If you don't have the cruise control, you can't let go because this thing will decelerate 20 miles an hour instantly. I wonder if that's in their uh, planned upgrades or option list for this uh, bike. Uh, dude, maintain your speed. Um, okay, fast, slow, fast, slow. What the hell are you doing? Wake up. 
slows down to 65 in front of me that he doesn't want me to let me pass him. Okay. Anyway, um, the uh, option for a cruise control on this would be great. And it's already throttled by wire, so it's just a software thing and, you know, some kind of a control for the handlebars to manage the cruise function. So uh, it would be nice if that might be in the uh, BRP accessory catalog at some point. I don't have high hopes, but, you know, it's possible. Back there, it makes this thing such a handful. Fighting it just to stay in the lane. As long as you're prepared for that aberrant behavior, you can correct for it, but it certainly makes it taxing over long journeys. All right, you go that way, I'll go this way. that'll be nice about that Madstad screen, if I get it, uh, is the uh, coverage on them is fantastic. Uh, I'm speaking in advance without knowledge of it on this bike, of course, but on my uh, CB500X, wow, it is just night and day. It's so, it's such a pronounced difference between the factory windscreen and that Madstad. Uh, the factory windscreen, I was getting boxed around all the time, you know, my head was getting buffeted, it was terrible. I took it off for a few days and it was better without it than it was with it. Uh, so then I purchased that uh, Madstad screen based on reviews and you know forum posts and people talking about how good they were. And man, I was not disappointed. Very, very good screen. Just looking at the pictures of the one for the uh, Riker, I didn't see any uh, little winglets or anything like that. So I think it's just the screen, but that's okay. This one's got the hand guards on it, so that kind of breaks up flow around your arms and your uh, lower chest area, your torso. I don't even know where you would put those little winglets on this. It would have to be on the sides over here. See, I'm decelerating all this time. I never touched the brakes once, so from 70 down to, you know, 45 or something in just, you know, five to eight seconds probably. I'd have to look at the, the footage on the camera to know for sure, but it, it really does decelerate pretty hard without the use of the brake. So you always got to be a little mindful about traffic right behind you. I would say my other scooters probably do that about the same, not quite as uh, rapid a deceleration as the Riker does, but uh, most CVT transmissions will do that. Just the nature of the beast. I haven't gotten around to ordering the uh, Admore Intelligent Brake Light Bar yet. Uh, I need to do that. I've just been so swamped with other stuff. And then I've got to tear into the wiring on the back of this uh, or under the seat area and figure out where to tap the, uh, the wires for the light bar. I always hate cutting into or tapping into uh, factory harnesses. I prefer to do uh, intercept harnesses where you're you know, piggybacking like a Y splitter kind of an arrangement. That way you're not really altering the factory harness and you don't get into warranty issues where they say, oh, well, if you've got any electrical problem, it's because you cut this one brake wire. <laughs> okay, sure. Thanks for that. This is going to be tricky.
actually, I don't think there's any way I'm getting through that, so I'm going to have to go around the other direction. The traffic is far too stacked. So I'll cheat and come around the back way. Whew, God, it stinks over here. I'm going to trash uh, dump behind us about a quarter of a mile. And whew, in the Houston heat in the summertime, it is ripe. When I stop up here at uh, Micro Center, I'll see if we can hear that loud whine. This whine, I don't know if you can hear it, that's the, uh, the radiator fans up front. It's a lower pitch. The fuel pump is a much higher pitch uh, whine, and it's definitely the fuel pump. Or another emissions pump, I don't know, but it's certainly not the radiator fans. parking up there in my normal cheating spot. This is too big for that, so I've got to go for a full spot. That's good enough. And if you have to do a full spot, just like with a motorcycle, you kind of need to leave it a little further back than front up. That way people can see you before they come flying into the spot and tattoo your bike. All right. Well, that took a lot longer in there than I had anticipated. Everybody's shopping for computer parts today, I guess. That's okay. This uh, job isn't really on a time limit for the day, so I can go on into the evening as far as is needed, but I'm trying to get over there, minimize the impact on their day. Ooh, it's hot. Traffic doesn't look like my friend right now. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of good food smelling over here. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's just chicken I'm smelling. It almost smells like uh, burgers or beef or something, but we got canes on that side. We've got uh, Pollo Loco, we've got Chick-fil-A, and then uh, further down, we've got a couple of others uh, ahead of me down there. That was nice. I haven't ever been able to figure out the rhyme or reason to the uh, Rikers fuel economy, because I have not been nice to it, this tank of fuel. Um, 92 miles into the trip, and it's been averaging you know, reported 31.8 here, and I've been flogging it. <laughs> Not being nice to it at all. I don't know if it's the difference in summer blend fuel or, uh, I don't know, maybe just the wind has been at my back for a little while. I'm not sure. And I really hate bringing the Riker through this section of town because the roads are horrible over here. That whole deceleration curve there was done, no brakes. Well, if I had to be stopped in this traffic anywhere, this is the best spot. Nice and shady. Oh no, bus has got his loading lights on. God, I'm going. Loading lights on way back behind the bus stop. I used to live right over here on the other side of 610 for about 10 years. And boy, I'll tell you, I do not miss this uh, traffic. Traffic on a Friday, oh goody.
Go on the screen, people. And that is how you get around in Houston traffic. Because people are sleeping at the switch constantly. Like this. What are you doing? jumps over in that lane to block traffic and then literally he's going 35 miles an hour on the highway with nothing in front of him. Maintain a speed. Nope. I'm already here. You stay there. food spot soon. I think I'll do it on the way here. It'll be easier. But I don't want typical fast food. I'm trying to eat healthier these days. So McDonald's is kind of out of the question. Subway wouldn't be bad. shut the video down now and uh, rejoin you all in a little while. All right, well, good afternoon all. I'm just about to start my return trip to Katy, and you can hear that whining fuel pump now, and the bike's been sitting for a couple of hours. That wee. It's a much higher pitch, uh, louder sound. It's not the, uh, the cooling fans up front. That's uh, fuel pump. And when I kill the motor, it goes away instantly. Let's see if it, if we can hear it again. Let me kill it completely. Let it go to sleep. As soon as I turned on the uh, the ignition, you know, I did the uh, the switch here. I started hearing the that loud whine. Look how that grip is wearing, man. That thing is wearing out. These are really soft. I'm gonna have to replace that soon. The only thing that ever touches it is this glove, so I don't know. Okay, here we go. So. That. That's really loud. Now, it goes away once the system is pressurized, and then you start it, and it's just making that loud whine constantly. And I've noticed, uh, even when I stop the the bike with the kill switch occasionally uh, I'll hear that for a second so I don't know it's a new sound I don't know if that means the pump is going bad or what it is we're gonna find out I will take it in have him look at it and uh, I will report back to the community at large clunk Drag the chin of this thing. All right. Yeah, it's very noticeable now. It's a much louder sound than it's ever made uh, prior to 
this new noise. And it's a higher pitched uh, tone, so it's uh, easy to differentiate between the uh, cooling fans. There it is, yellow. I was going to say, normally coming through here, that light's red by the time you can get to it. So I take this little side road to uh, avoid that. And I think I'm making my escape uh, just in time because it's Friday and traffic is horrible over in this area of town. Uh, okay. Just because he was... Uh, stuck in the middle of the intersection, he decides to throw his lights up. He put himself there. Anyway, uh, yeah, traffic over here in this part of town gets brutal around this time, uh, especially on Fridays, so I'm going to try to get out to Katie before things get ugly. He's paying attention behind this guy. I kind of figured that would be the case. As I'm going by him, I could see him uh, sitting there on the cell phone. The guy has, still hasn't even cleared the first intersection yet. <laughs> With as much as I drive in uh, Houston, bigger, busy cities, I've learned to uh, look into the cars and watch what the drivers are doing, both for my safety and for avoiding uh, people parked on uh, green lights like that. You can usually kind of tell how someone's going to drive based on what they're doing in their car. And normally waiting behind some oblivious genius at a green light like that isn't a big deal if you're in a car and you've got air conditioning, but on a bike in 100 degree temps, every one of those idiots that you can avoid saves you dehydrating and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And waiting. stuck in the middle of a bunch of those idiots because invariably one of them is going to change lanes without looking and there's nowhere to go. At least over here in the left lane you've got a shoulder for an escape route. Ask me how I know. Uh, this pavement just is horrible on the right I'm getting thrown all over the road. A full foot plus sway left to right. It's crazy. to find the solution for this tires alignment camber arm something it's just brutal i was dealing with this same condition uh coming through dallas going northbound through dallas uh, in the toll lanes or express lanes and i was getting pushed almost a full lane side to side just because of the off-camber surfaces and the wind and whatnot, yeah, it's really a handful. And it happens so rapidly that you have a real problem, with, you know, correcting it. Uh, if it's a slow sway, you know, you can you can dial in against it and fight it, but it happens so quickly that you have to fight, fight, fight to keep it in the lane. And then you have to be careful not to overcorrect because then as the uh, the, the road condition changes, you know, the camber returns to normal, you're flying back the other direction just as fast as you went out of lane. Really? Keep 
getting in the left lane, the ones that are holding up traffic. Slowing down to 55 in the HOV. HOV, and it is stopped solid.